I don't think it's it's wrong at all to say if you want to be in America, of course you should share American values that have made this country so great. I want to touch about on the immigration policy you write in Leadership and Crisis. Your parents are immigrants, but you are forceful in saying we need to secure the border, which includes um, an actual fence and a digital fence. But what I found fascinating is you don't just stop there. You say we need a smart immigration policy for legal immigration uh, going after skilled workers who are going to benefit our society, not unskilled workers. That's exactly right. Two things. One, I'm not just saying that the only people we let in the, the country should only be those with college degrees, but it seems crazy that just as soon as people are at that point when they contribute, they want to contribute to our economy, they're in a position to do it. The high-tech software engineers, the, the well-trained scientists, we kick them out. The people most likely to make an economic contribution, we train them at our universities. Sometimes we subsidize their research, and then we make them leave, and they go compete with us in other countries. Surely there's room in our economy for hardworking individuals that may not have formal education, and that's fine, too, as long as we have a policy based on the real needs of our economy. Right now, we're kicking out the most productive, uh, some of the most productive immigrants that want to work here and want to contribute here. But there's a third part of the immigration policy as well. Yes, we need to secure the borders and enforce our laws. We're a country of laws. Secondly, have an immigration policy that's tied to the needs of our, our society, our country, our economy. But third, let's go back to the old-fashioned American process where you actually assimilate when you come here. Now, the politically correct crowd will tell you, you can't impose American values on people. Well, that's nonsense. What's wrong with opposing American values on people that want to come here? I, I write in the book that we want converts, not just immigrants. You know, obviously, English should be the common language. Well, how are you going to succeed in this country if you don't speak the language? And of course, we should say, if you come here, you're not coming here to be on welfare or get a government check. That's not the American dream. We should welcome people who want to work, make a contribution. They're coming here to seek a better life for themselves and, and their children. Now, we shouldn't become like Japan and certain European countries where we just end immigration or cut it down or, or curtail it so severely that we, we become an aging society that's not dynamic, that's not growing. But let's go back to what has made this a great country. What's so unique about America, we're not defined by our history or our last name. Some people have been here for hundreds of years. Some people's families have been here for hundreds of hours. What unites us, what the founding fathers understood was what unites us is our values. And the founding fathers didn't intend a government so big they could give us everything. Remember what they said, government big enough to give you everything is big enough to take everything away. They believed in a limited government, rugged self-determinism, individual self-sufficient Americans with freedom that we're able to pursue their dreams and pursue opportunities, we need to get back to that and we should be unafraid to say this is the melting pot. This is, you know, assimilation. Now, surely immigrants bring their valuable contributions to our culture and that's how we've gotten some of our favorite foods and favorite traditions. But my point is, my point is it's become politically incorrect to say that people that come here should share our values. Well, I'm here to tell you that I don't think it's, it's wrong at all to say if you want to be in America, of course you should share American values that have made this country so great. And I'm proud to say exceptional. Unlike the president, I don't put any caveats on it. This is the greatest country in the history of the world. And we make no apologies for that. Now, it's not inevitable we'll remain the greatest country. The founding fathers understood that this was an experiment that required a moral, virtuous, religious people. I've got a whole culture, on whole chapter on culture about how it's our culture that separates America and truly makes us great.